All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we have Jess Flaherty from OCIO joining us to talk about CrowdStrike. So thank you so much for joining us, Jess. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and posted on the ISOC website no later than tomorrow, so you can find it there if you want to look back at anything or share it with anyone. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or the Q&A box, and we will get to those throughout the presentation and for sure catch them all at the end if we miss any. Uh, so right now I will hand it over to Jess. Get us started. Great, thank you so much. Excited to be here today. Um, welcome everyone. I'm Jess Flaherty with OCIO. I am the local government program manager here at the OCIO. So um, I tell people I get to be the liaison to any of our services teams and services um, for the services we provide to our local government partners. Um, I've been with OCIO about 18 months, but I've been in state government for over 14 years um, and been with a few different agencies. Um, throughout my time and my background's mostly been in project management and organizational change management, which is just a fancy way of saying internal communication. So um, excited to be here. Thanks for having us um, to the ISAC and we will get started. Um, and as mentioned, please feel free to um, put your questions in the chat or in the Q&A box and uh, I'm happy to take questions throughout or um, like we mentioned I will have time at the end as well. So just a little overview on the OCIO for you if you're unfamiliar with our agency. We are now a part of the Department of Management. So the Office of the Chief Information Officer is a department, a division of the Department of Management. Um, and we have in the Iowa Code oversight responsibilities for our agency partners, including IT procurement, enterprise IT and information security, security standards, as well as um, a more holistic strategic technology planning piece. And then in Iowa Code 8B, uh, it specifically gives OCIO the ability to serve executive, judicial, and legislative branches, the Iowa counties and cities, educational institutions, and nonprofit organizations here in the state as well. So today we're going to spend some time talking about our local government cybersecurity program. A large component of that, as you will see, is our CrowdStrike, our EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response um, software. But there are some other components that I wanted to make sure you were aware of as well. This local government cybersecurity program is free to our local government partners. It is funded through some federal grants, as well as a grant that we partner with Homeland Security here in the state to obtain. Um, and the four main components of this program are the Security Operations Center, Enterprise Vulnerability Management, Security Awareness Training, and Endpoint Detection and Response. The first piece we'll talk about is Enterprise Vulnerability Management System, or EVMS. So this is a security tool that scans computers, servers, and other devices for vulnerabilities um, that threat hunters can leverage. So a vulnerability is a fault that is susceptible to attack. So all of us have software applications that we um, use on our devices, on our computers, or possibly servers. Um, and what this EVMS software does for us, for our customers, is it scans your device and it says, hey, Windows is outdated. And so you need to run an update on that program. It takes all the, those are vulnerabilities when there's um, software updates sent and you don't update them right away, though that's a vulnerability. That is a fault that's susceptible to an attack. And so what these reports do is it generates all those vulnerabilities. And what the benefit to our customers is it helps you prioritize which patches or which vulnerabilities to mitigate first. Um, some are obviously going to be a much higher priority than others. And this is um, in normal computer use and device usage, we're gonna have vulnerabilities all the time. You're never gonna have a device 100% um, patched. So this uh, report, like I said, it just helps you prioritize those vulnerabilities so that you have a place to start. Um, so that is our EVMS tool. And next, I have a couple of, I have three short little videos for you um, with just some really good information and reminders about important cybersecurity practices. The first one here is on passwords, um, and these were generated from some of our federal partners for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Thank you. 
Excuse me, there we go. Okay, so the next piece kind of leading into security awareness training, that little video is about passwords. And so we know that um, passwords are one of the three main components to help prevent attacks. We have passwords, people, and patching. So passwords go hand in hand with our people component. And to help address that, our local government cybersecurity program um, one of the components is security awareness training. And so security awareness training, really the purpose of that is to empower our employees to identify different forms of attacks such as phishing, phone scams, or impersonation calls. Our security awareness training program is about two hours of self-paced online training. So there's data protection, introduction to phishing and vishing, avoiding dangerous links and attachments, physical security beyond passwords, what to do if you suspect a breach, and USB device safety. So those are the main components of this online security awareness training for, um, we use this security awareness training here at the state for all of our employees, but also again for our local government partners. Um, and the other component to this security awareness training is phishing tests. So these are simulated phishing emails that get sent out to the list you provide us, the list of emails you provide us, um, and it records whether the users responded by clicking on that phishing link or not. And so, um, you know, this is a really great way to implement the security awareness training and then run a random phishing test. Um, so this phishing test is a great way for you to kind of analyze how your staff did with the training, if you need more training, if there's, um, you know, if you have a high rate, a high click rate in this phishing test, maybe that's something that we need to look into some additional training for those, um, for that group of employees as well. And then we can repeat that phishing test to kind of see where, if you've made progress or where you're at then. Okay, this next little video is about multi-factor authentication. And then we'll move on to the next component of our program. Okay, before I hand the slide deck over to Danny with our Security Operations Center, um, that video again was about multi-factor authentication. This is the number one thing we are hearing from cyber insurance um, companies that they are requiring of their customers to have multi-factor authentication. We know this is one of the top ways that you can prevent an attack um, from happening inside your network. And so multi-factor authentication is very, very, very important. We highly recommend it. Um, there are some companies that you can go with, uh, the state has historically. Um, we're currently using Okta. Previously, we used a company named Duo. You can procure that software. Excuse me, you can procure that software through OCIO if you would like, through our procurement department with pre negotiated contracts um, that our local government partners are able to purchase or procure items directly from those. Um, also, if you have a cloud email system, such as Google or Microsoft 365, you can turn on multi-factor multi authentication or two-factor authentication, as it's sometimes called, for your email, um, your cloud-based email as well. And we would highly recommend that if you have either of those email platforms, you do that right away as well. Um, if you have more questions about multi-factor authentication, or if you're interested in um, implementing that in your county, please reach out to me and I can um, get you connected with the right person to take the next step. So the next component 
of our local government cybersecurity program is endpoint detection and response. Um, so this EDR tool, you've heard a lot about CrowdStrike. We've been talking about it a lot. I know we put an article in the ISAC County Magazine about CrowdStrike, and I brought along my counterpart from the security operations team, Danny O'Neill. So Danny is a security expert, um, has been with OCIO for quite some time. I'm going to stop introducing him and let him introduce himself, and then he's going to take us through um, the next few slides about endpoint detection, the importance of it, as well as our CrowdStrike platform. Yep. Hey guys, um, I'm Danny O'Neill. Like she said, I am the vulnerability management and also the um, endpoint detection and response manager at the state. So here to talk to you guys a little bit about EDR. EDR is essentially a um, device that you put on your endpoints and it protects it from malware or any kind of malicious activities that happen on the actual endpoint itself. So if we wanna go ahead and get to the next slide here, we'll talk a little bit about some of the features of the different tools. So the two tools that we currently have at the state is FireEye or Trelix is the first one. Um, it was originally called FireEye until it was bought out by McAfee and then it changed its name to Trelix. Um, one of its major uh, features is that it does triage collection that essentially around the time of a vulnerable alert, it will collect data around, you know, what code, sort of things were happening before and after an alert. Uh, was there any type of emails that were downloaded or anything that looks potentially malicious at that point? Um, it does a pretty good job on being able to, once we actually have an incident to go in and explain to people and walk them through, here's the exact scenario of what happened and here's where it ended. Um, the new tool that we're going with um, implementing across everywhere is CrowdStrike. Um, that has it's a next generation AV solution. Uh, it has more of a real time response. So instead of having that triage collection where we get the data in as an alert happens, it has real time monitoring. So it's always sending us de details about if there's any kind of alerts happening. Is there anything going on that looks suspicious? So it does a pretty good job on letting us know if there's anything out there that we should be looking at. Um, it also, like I said, it has telemetry data to monitor live events. So we're always able to look through threat hunt. Um, that's essentially just looking through and looking for any sort of actors or attackers that may or may not be inside of your environment. And it is also multi-tenant. Um, that's something that we have been working on throughout the state right now. And it's also been going into uh, phases in other places. It's essentially a way for us to work with your department to have basically the same view into your environment and help you guys, you know, stand side by side and look at an alert and see what happened. And it's, a, it's much better to do for um, working with trying to determine how, to, how something happened and being able to work together. The different modules we have for Falcon is the Spotlight, Discover, Overwatch, Device Control, and X features. Um, Spotlight is a scanless vulnerability scanner. So kind of what she was talking about earlier with weaknesses in your guys' system, it will automatically look for those. Um, Discover is a way for you guys to look through and see if there's any dis um, other machines that do not have something. Um, and then we have a few other ones on there. And also they both have the ability to contain so if something happens, we make sure that it doesn't have any sort of damage that can be done on the computer, and they both have the ability to do threat hunting and searching. So what is CrowdStrike Falcon? Um, so um, the oh, well, <laughs> sorry, Danny, I <laughs> you're, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where are we at? Um, so like I said, it's the next. Uh, so it has the real time response. Um, like I said, we have the most expansive package of, of, Crow, of CrowdStrike Falcon. So we have a lot of abilities to be able to look through you guys' environment and work with you. And we kind of went through these other ones already. So let's go to the next one. So going through them, like I said, so the prevent, uh, basically it monitors and prevents uh, malicious activities inside of your guys' system. If there's any sort of commands like PowerShell or anything that looks really bad going on that shouldn't happen, it will kind of pretty much prevent that and monitor and let us know. Spotlight is a vulnerability scan. Like I said, it um, basically will help you guys with um, informing about patches. If you guys need to fix anything and a lot of prioritization for you guys. So it'll tell you, you know, if you have critical ones out there that attackers are attacking, um, you should get those fixed first. And then identifies a lot of security risks on the devices. And for Discover, it does your IT asset inventory. So it keeps a good inventory list of all the different um, machines that are on your network. And it has a good job on showing you if you have any kind of like rogue devices or devices you don't even know that's running on your infrastructure. So it does a good job on explaining that sort of information. Go to the next slide. 
Okay. And then so the other features we have on there is Overwatch, which is a managed threat hunting provided service by CrowdStrike professionals. Uh, essentially, they are always going through those details, the telemetry data that we get from your guys' machines, and they're looking for any kind of incidents that happen 24-7 a day. Uh, every, anytime that they see something that looks to be suspicious in nature, they will give us a call and kind of tell us what they're seeing going on. And that's, again, with that multi-tenancy, we can walk that through with you guys live if there's any sort of thing that we see from that Overwatch team. And the device control, once again, it ensures safe USB usage and monitors if there's any sort of suspicious behavior on those USBs. And it will also be able to ensure that there's safe connections for USBs. So you don't want to have someone inserting certain USBs and taking data out of it. It's a good way for you guys to at least monitor and look for that kind of stuff. And then Falcon X is a good job with our threat intelligence and indicators. So it's basically it's a way for us to see alerts that are happening with those common APT groups or advanced persistent threats out there on the internet who are constantly trying to break into systems. And it gives us a good way to actually watch for them and prevent them from doing harm to our systems. Okay, so everything that we've been doing so far has been in a three-phase approach when we have been doing these outreaches because we want to make sure that we are implementing it in a safe and good manner. Um, so essentially what we've been doing is the, in this three-phase approach is phase one was always the detect only mode. That's basically just a way for us to monitor, make sure everything is safe. Uh, make sure that there isn't anything that's going to be impacted by the system. And then we slowly move everyone over to phase two, which does do a little bit of blocking. And so far, we've seen pretty successful with all of it, wherever we've been doing this out there. And then phase three, which is full protection, which essentially we're trying to get to. That's our last phase there where we'll be pretty confident in our security stack from this um, effort. Like we said here, we plan on beginning the full county migration of all systems starting in January of 2023. And we will continue to migrate counties um, by adding the systems into the first phase slowly, making sure that we're testing, making sure that there's no processes or anything like that that will be stopped along the way. Awesome. I'm going to jump in real quick, Danny, if you don't mind. So as you can see here at the top of the slide, our county auditor partners and critical and their critical election staff um, or their staff devices have been migrated to CrowdStrike. So we began working with the auditors department um, in July, August to uh, migrate them to CrowdStrike. And the reason we started there was so that we could implement CrowdStrike in the auditor's offices prior to the elections this year. So um, the county auditors have been fantastic to work with. We've had great success. We've in fact just um, finished our phase two uh, testing with the county auditor's devices. And so we have some of those devices that will be moving to phase three next week. And the remainder of those devices will be moving to phase two next week. It's like I said, been very successful the partnership from our county friends across the state has been wonderful. Um, and so we are looking forward to implementing CrowdStrike beyond the auditor's offices in our counties um, starting in January of 2023. And like it says here on the slide, we will be doing that in a ISAC. We'll be using the ISAC districts to start that uh, phase, that implementation or that migration with our county partners. The reason being um, 99 counties is a lot, and um, each county is essentially the size of one of our state agencies. And so we want to make sure that we can get that rolled out to our county partners in an effective way, but also in a way that we are able to um, help you and make sure that we are not causing or that this doesn't cause any disruptions on your networks. We've not seen that so far, but again, we just want to plan for that and make sure that we're not rushing um, through all 99 counties at one time so that we can appropriately assist our county partners. So we will be using the districts um, and just for the sake of ease, we'll probably start with district three and work clockwise around the district map. Um, just, you know, kind of picking out of a out of a bucket there, but that seemed to make the most sense. So you can look for more information coming from myself or my alternate inbox, which is government.services at OCIO. Um, we'll be sending more information regarding that full countywide migration. Um, if you have questions about where your county's at with our cybersecurity program right now, you can email me. My contact information will be later here in this in the slide deck. So you'll be able to do that as well. So just wanted to jump in there and, and kind of expand on that a little bit. 
Um, and then like we just spoke about the CrowdStrike for Auditors, that's been happening. Um, just as a reminder, you have some resources. So ISAC Tech Bureau Manager, Joel Roney, um, he is a great resource for the counties. If you have cyber questions, you can reach out to him directly. He has been assisting counties, um, county auditor offices if they've requested it with the CrowdStrike migration. Um, and we are obviously partnering very closely with him for the migration for the rest of the counties as well. Um, you see Jesse Martinez is our EDR customer support analyst and he can assist. And then you have my contact information as well. Okay, before we move on, this is a great time. If we've had any questions come in, we can um, answer some of those before we keep moving. And if not, we'll, we'll show our next little video and move to our fourth and final component of the program. I don't see any questions yet, so. Okay, okay, sounds great. All right, this uh, third little video is about ransomware um, and some fun statistics on that. Okay, so I'll keep moving here. Our fourth and final component of the local government cybersecurity program is our security operations center. So the security operations center component goes hand in hand with the EDR. Um, you cannot get the security operations center coverage without having the EDR installed on your devices. Um, and you'll see why here in a moment as we move through that. So the Security Operations Center or the SOC, as we will often refer to it, uh, provides cybersecurity threat monitoring and alerting to our customers 24 7, 365. So what is a security operations center? Again, the purpose of a SOC is to monitor, prevent, detect, investigate, and respond to cyber threats. Um, here at OCIO, we have a security operations center that is comprised of four main types of security experts that we employ. So we have tier one and tier two analysts. Their role and responsibility is to monitor the SOC cybersecurity tools, analyze events as they are detected and initiate remediation procedures. So those, um, like I said, we have tier one and tier two, and those guys are the ones that are looking at all of our um, different types of software and reporting that's coming in constantly in the new feeds and it's giving them information and they're constantly monitoring that and looking um, for any type of suspicious events. And then we have our threat intelligence analysts. They are going to be the group of people that's investigating emergency, emerging, excuse me, threats and advise of the mitigation efforts. Um, we have security engineers. So they're going to architect the cybersecurity tools for implementation, and they also serve as a point of escalation for high priority incidences. So if our tier one analysts um, see something that's high, a high alert or high priority, they're going to partner with those security engineers. Um, those security engineers are typically more tenured. They are going to have more years of experience in the secure, cybersecurity world. And they, like we said, they can be a point of escalation. So they can help mitigate and resolve those alerts or those incidences um, quickly with our team. And architecting the cybersecurity tools. So what that means is they're going to take tools, they're going to take the data that they're being given by our threat intelligence analysts um, through CrowdStrike. We talked about that Overwatch and that Falcon X. So they're going to get information from lots of those sources, our federal partners, and they're going to take our tools. And if they know a certain type of attack is happening, they're going to make sure our tools are proactively looking for that very specific type of attack. Um, so that's kind of what that architecting the cybersecurity tools is. They can kind of tweak those tools to make sure that um, we are proactively looking for what we know is happening in today's environment. And that can change often. And so, like I said, they'll take that data and they'll really um, analyze that data and then help our team respond appropriately to mitigate those risks to the best of our ability. And then the fourth group of security experts that we employ in our security operations center is security governance, risk, and compliance team. So these are experts that advise and collaborate with our customers on security audits, training. Um, they kind of help manage the security awareness training component um, for our customers, as well as policies. 
So just again, a reminder, what does the SOC do for you? I really think um, our security operations center is where you get your biggest bang for your buck if you were paying. Um, our security operations center is there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They're constantly monitoring um, and they are there for cyber support. And then we also, this helps us improve our response time and visibility into cyber threats. Um, they deliver additional resources to evolve and advance our cyber activity and practices amongst our um, SLTTs, our state, local tribes and territories. And they also share real-time cyber threat intelligence of observed vulnerabilities. So another component of what our security operations center does is they send out security alerts as necessary to all of our customers. So they're taking that uh, excuse me, those real-time threat intelligence vulnerabilities that they might see, um, and they are sending out security alerts regularly. So they, you have device-specific alerts that could come from, they would come from our security operations center, excuse me, if you had a, an alert on one of your individual devices, or we also send out regular security alerts to all of our customers, and those are awareness. So here's something that's been um, happening globally or happening in our country, or here's a vulnerability we know that's being attacked, um, that's very susceptible and reminding you and giving you information about how to patch for that vulnerability. So those are the types of real-time threat intelligence that we're sharing with our customers. A little information, more information about our security operations center. So we have high alerts, obviously, those are going to be the most urgent. Um, those often in, or may include automated device containment. So that automated device containment with our software, we can automatically shut the device down that has a high alert. And so that way that device is no longer talking to your network. So whatever malicious activity is happening on that device does not spread further. Um, so that's really, really helpful to our customers, especially if we see something, you know, after regular business hours, we can shut that down so it doesn't spread across your entire network and cause a larger incident or issue for you. Um, when we have a high alert, that's going to be initiated with an email and a phone call. Um, we set up an instant response plan so we know who to email, who to, who to call. Um, we have after hours information that we ask for. So we will initiate that, like I said, with an email and a phone call. Um, and then again, we'll follow up with you hourly, more frequently, if necessary, we may stay on the phone with you. It all depends on the specific situation, but you're going to get that um, specific support and kind of hand-holding from our security operations center, which is part of our incident remediation support from our security team. And then as well as all high alerts will be escalated to our chief information security officer. And so the reason that that's helpful is our CISO, his name is Shane. Um, he really has a lot of experience, years of experience in this world, and he can help with um, help inform you of who you need to contact. Obviously the first thing you should do if you have cyber insurance is contact them. We can help, he can help get that data pulled together for you. He's gonna help our team and make sure that we're responding appropriately and as quickly as possible and assisting you um, to the best of our abilities. And then we also, our security operations center also fields medium and low alerts. So these sometimes can be false positives. So what do false positives mean is you may use an application um, regularly and sometimes that can, send an alert to our security operations center. And what we do in the case of those false positives is we work with you. And if the case is that it's normal business operations for you, then we um, go through a process to make sure that that false positive doesn't happen again. Um, also medium and low alerts are often very minor impact. They are initiated through an email alert from our security team. Um, that's the SOC at iowa.gov email address. Um, and then we also, excuse me, um, offer remediation assistance if you request that in the case of a medium or low alert as well. Okay, so those were the four main component or the four components of our local government cybersecurity program. Like I said, there was a, um, a couple other key things that we wanted to touch on today, strategic partnerships being one of them. So we do partner with a few different groups and we like to point out kind of the importance of those groups and some of them you can take advantage of as well. So we partner with the MSISAC, the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center. Um, I have a bit more information about them, but all local governments are able to be a member of MSISAC as well. And that is free um, to you. We partner with CISA, our cyber 
Security Infrastructure Security Agency. Um, so they're our federal partner. We partner with them regularly. We're getting information from them. We're sharing information as it's necessary or helpful to both sides. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we also partner with the Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management Department. Um, we obtain a federal grant through that is um, given to them and then they can disperse that to the people who apply. And so we apply for that grant and we have obtained that for, I believe almost 10 years in a row. And so that grant is significantly um, provides the funding for this program. So it can be free of charge to all of you. And then the last group that we like to point out is the Iowa County's Information Technology Group. So that is an affiliate. ICIT is an affiliate of ISAC. Um, if you're not familiar with them, we have some more information and we highly encourage you to be members um, and get connected with your ICIT group. A little bit more about MS ISAC and then ES ISAC. So the MS ISAC is, um, excuse me, their main purpose is to serve SLTT. So that's state, local governments, tribes and territories. They offer instant response and remediation. They also offer a 24 up 24 by seven security operations center. Um, we are members of MS ISAC and we are a member of their security operations center. So when you become a customer of ours, you get the state of Iowa security operations center, which is monitored by the MS ISAC security operations center as well. So it's just another layer. Um, you know, we're, we're leaning on our federal partners to help us as well. So that is a great benefit to you. And we encourage you to be a member. If you would like to be a member, if you're not sure if your county is a member, you can email the MS ISAC there is their email address, which you will have a copy of. And then the other group that is um, very helpful for counties to know about is the EI ISAC which is the Elections Infrastructure Information Sharing and Analysis Center. So we encourage all county auditors as your responsibility with elections here in the state of Iowa, we encourage you to be members of the EI ISAC. Um, and you can reach out to question, to ask if you're a member or to become a member to the um, email address listed there as well. Okay. So we've come to the point of the day where we want to talk about some key takeaways. So from those short videos, we wanted to remind you that passwords, people, and patching are the three P's of cybersecurity. And the three P's of cybersecurity are the most effective way that you can prevent a breach or an incident from happening in your local government. So strong passwords. Um, we're hearing now from our I just had a call with ICAP this week um, from other cyber insurance providers. They are looking for passwords that are at least 10 characters. They're actually preferring 12 to 14 character passwords now. So strong passwords, passwords that are changed regularly, that are not shared across multiple um, logins, you know, a unique password for those. Um, updating your system. So that patching, we talked about the enterprise vulnerability management system that we offer as part of this program, um, the EVM or the vulnerability scanning that comes as part of CrowdStrike. So that, that does not implement the patch for you, but what that's going to help you with again, is it's going to scan those devices for you. It's going to inform you of the vulnerabilities that are on those specific devices and help you prioritize which vulnerabilities to patch first. Um, so that is really important. So that's passwords and patching and staff training um, addresses the people of the three P's. So staff training, we have again, security awareness training that we offer as part of this program, um, as well as phishing tests. And so we would recommend that you do the security awareness training once a year. That's how we all do that here at the state level. We take that security awareness training annually. And then the phishing test, um, that phishing test is gonna help give you a baseline of where you're at right now. And you can repeat that test after you do the security awareness training to see how far you've come with your, your staff and your local government. Um, the other second key takeaway today is our security operations center. So again, um, the security operations center, we're really here to serve you and serve our customers. We're 24 seven, 365 shop, constantly monitoring those devices, looking for those um, malicious activities, looking for any type of alert that's coming in through any of this different software components that we're using in our security operations center. And we're here to help you. If something happens, if there is an incident or anything larger than that, a breach or any other um, issue in your local government, we are here to help. We do have staff on site. They are here to help you. Our chief information security officer is here to help you. So we're really here to be a partner in that. We don't we don't just send you an alert and and walk away. We're here to partner with you there. Um, 
And then the last component to take away for today is our CrowdStrike migration. So right now we've been using FireEye, like we said, we're migrating to that next generation CrowdStrike and all the components that it offers to our customers, those six CrowdStrike features. Um, and that will be happening beginning in the new calendar year. Right now we're working with the county auditors. Everything has been going really well. We've not heard any um, negative feedback from the CrowdStrike side of things at this point. And we're getting that migrated to our auditors to get them into the full protection mode of phase three prior to the elections. And we are excited to help the remainder of our counties or county departments, excuse me, um, get onto our CrowdStrike platform after the first of the year um, to help increase prove your cybersecurity posture. Contact information. So you can see my contact information is here. The government.services inbox is my more generic inbox. I am the main monitor of that inbox. Um, so if you do get a response there, it is coming from me. Um, and then also included here, our state of Iowa Secure Cybersecurity Operations Center. So our SOC is available 24 seven to you. You can email them, you can call them. The 1-800 number is a 24 seven number, 725 will get you um, get you there as well. Um, our Security Operations Center, you know, if, if you get an email that looks suspicious to you, you can email it to the SOC here at that email address, sock at iowa.gov, they will review that email for you. Don't just click on links that you're unaware of. Don't, if you're suspicious of an email at all, they can analyze that email from you. If you are experiencing any type of cyber issue in your county, please, if it's, you know, if it's something coming from a device that we're not necessarily monitoring through our endpoint detection, our CrowdStrike or our FireEye, that's okay, give us a call. Our security team is here to help you. Um, and so give us a call if you have, if you're suspicious of any activity that's happening, um, like I said, or any type of email, call us, email the Security Operations Center, and they are here to help. Right, that's all I have for today. I don't know if we had any other questions come in. Um, happy to answer questions for all of you. Danny's here to answer any technical questions if I, if I can't answer, answer it either. I don't see any other questions yet. We can give people a few minutes if you'd like. Get those yeah, in the chat. Absolutely. Danny, one thing that might be helpful that we didn't cover in very much detail, if you could talk about when we say endpoint detection, what is an endpoint? If you could talk to the group about what we consider endpoints and where they might want to um, really focus that endpoint detection, you know, if they have to phase it or if we're starting someplace or doing a little testing in the county, what what are your thoughts on that? Um, hmm. So I know <laughs> the, the official definition of endpoint is a physical device that connects and exchanges information with computer networks, um, but for specifically CrowdStrike related things, um, there is a range of, I um, believe it is after Windows 2000 and higher. Um, those are going to be the ones that we're targeting as first round. Um, those are just pretty much any of the endpoint user machines, anything that is a server that might be hosting your data on it. Um, we cover that in pretty much our first round, and then we go back through. And if you guys happen to have anything that is a Linux type of product, um, anything that is, you know, like Ubuntu servers or anything like that, that you might be hosting websites on, um, we go, we're probably on going through that in the second round where we, after we get about, you know, all of your guys' normal assets put into there. Um, but normally when we're doing like the phase testing uh, for the endpoints, we want to just kind of get a good basis of um, kind of just everything that you guys are doing on a normal basis. So we want to make sure that when we are going through the different phases, when we're doing our test groups, that we don't accidentally get something in there that um, will block something that is critical. So we often will ask people to just put in, you know, some of your test environments or anything like that for your endpoints. And then we plug it in there and then we'll see if it blocks anything in that nature. I don't know if that's a good answer to your question, but yeah, that's, that's the helpful. answer we came up with. Yeah, that's helpful. So again, a reminder of like, we say endpoints, what, what we mean by endpoint is if you have a laptop, if you have a desktop serve on-prem servers, on-premise servers, um, servers where you store data. Those are the types of endpoints or devices we are speaking about. Um, we 
those, um, like Danny said, they kind of phase which ones they target first. So the Windows machines, and then they move to the Linux um, devices. So that's that's the type of endpoint we are talking about when we talk about our endpoint detection and response, and specifically installing CrowdStrike. We do have a question that came into the chat. It's, oh, it just asked if you could go back to the yeah. screen with your email address. Yep. Oh, with the email address to send suspicious emails too. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no problem. Yeah, so if you have an email that you is suspicious and you're unsure of a link, um, I know a, a county reached out to me last week about an email that they thought was suspicious. Don't send those emails to me, please. <laughs> um, I cannot analyze those emails for you. The email address you need to send those emails to is SOC at iowa.gov. That's right here, SOC at iowa.gov. So that's our security operations center and our tier one and tier two security analysts monitor that inbox 24 seven. If you just forward the email and just make note, um, look suspicious, can you please analyze or let me know if this is a phishing email, something along those lines, just, you could just be a sentence, no big deal. They will look at that email for you and they can respond to you. Um, and it's helpful for them to get those emails so that, you know, they know what's happening around the state um, and they can and know if there's a phishing campaign out there, we can send information through a, a security alert, just letting our customers know about phishing campaigns if we see them. So great question. Any other questions out there? I don't have any others that have come through yet. Okay. So. All right, well, I'll just talk about the key takeaways one last time. Um, if you have questions, you can throw them out there right now. Otherwise, uh, this is this is the final bit of information I have for you. So again, um, key takeaways, the three P's to cybersecurity, passwords, patching, and people. So strong passwords, we're looking for a minimum of 10 to 12 characters on those passwords, making sure those passwords are updated or changed regularly. Um, update your system, so the patching, uh, again, use our local government cybersecurity program, that EVMS portion of that program to help you scan for vulnerabilities, which informs your patching and then actually implement those patches. So that's your updating of your systems. And then the people of the three P's, so staff training, security awareness training, we can do those phishing tests for you and help get an idea of where your staff is in your local government. So people patching passwords. Those are the three P's of cybersecurity. That's going to take you a really long way in cybersecurity. The other thing we talked about today that is really helpful that ICAP's looking for and other cybersecurity um, insurance agencies as also the number one thing we recommend at the OCIO is multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is so important. That means that a hacker can't just take your password and get into your system. They, they need more than just your password, right? So that multi-factor auth authentication is very, very important and is going to help prevent a tremendous amount of incidences, attacks, breaches in your systems. So if you want more information about multi-factor authentication, if you're looking for some quotes to get started with multi-factor authentication, please reach out to me and I can help get you pointed in the right direction and get you moving as far as multi-factor authentication. Um, the security, the next takeaway for you is our security operations center 24 seven, 365. We're here to serve you truly. That's the, that's the mission of our security operations center um, is to secure Iowa. And that includes our local government partners. Um, so if you have questions, you can reach out to the security operations center. Like I said, if you have a suspicious email, you can send it to them. If you have something happen in your County and it's on a device that isn't necessarily enrolled in our program, you can call us anyways. We're going to assist our County and our local government 
government partners. Um, and the third takeaway for today is the CrowdStrike migration. So if you're unaware, if your county department is enrolled in our local government program, you can reach out to me and we can talk about that and see where your county's at. Um, we are migrating to CrowdStrike for all of our local government partners beginning in January of 2023. And so that migration is going to take place and that's going to put you in a good cybersecurity posture that's going to help your county that is also going to ensure that that device with CrowdStrike installed is monitored by our security operations center. Um, so that's going to help prevent a lot of attacks and incidents from happening in your local government. So that is all the information I have for you today. Um, one last call for questions, otherwise. That's it from OCIO. I'm not seeing any more come in, but thank you so okay. much, Jess and Danny, for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank yeah. you guys for listening. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Um, again, here's our contact information, and I know this is going to get posted for you. So if you uh, have IT friends or other departments you want to have this information, please share it and share my contact information. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.